Muslims continue to be targeted with impunity in many countries. Our shrines are being destroyed. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam insulted. The Holy Quran burnt. And all this in the name of freedom of speech. Incidents in Europe, including republication of blasphemous sketches by Charlie Hebdo, are recent examples. We stress that willful provocations and incitement to hate and violence must be universally outlawed. This assembly should declare an international day to combat Islamophobia and build a coalition to fight the scourge, scourge that splits humanity. Mr. President, the one country in the world today where I'm sad to say the state sponsors Islamophobia, and that is India. The reason behind this is the RSS ideology that unfortunately rules India today. This extremist ideology was founded in the 1920s. The RSS founding fathers were inspired by the Nazis and they adopted their concepts of racial purity and supremacy. While the Nazis' hate was directed at the Jews, the RSS directs it towards the Muslims and to a lesser extent, the Christians. They believe that India is exclusively for Hindus and others are not equal citizens. The secularism of Gandhi and Nehru has been replaced by the dream of creating a Hindu Rashtra by subjugating, even cleansing India's 200 million Muslims and other minorities. In 1992, the RS destroyed the Babri Masjid. In 2002, some 2,000 Muslims were slaughtered in Gujarat. And this was under the watch of Chief Minister Modi. In 2007, over 50 Muslims were burnt alive by RSS arsonists aboard the Samjota Express train. In Assam, around 2 million Muslims faced the prospects of being arbitrarily stripped of their nationality through the adoption of discriminatory laws. There are reports of large concentration camps being filled by Muslim Indian citizens. Muslims were falsely blamed, vilified and victimized for spreading the coronavirus. They were denied medical attention on many occasions. Their, bu their businesses were boycotted. Cow vigilantes attack and kill Muslims with impunity. Last February, Muslims faced targeted killings with police complicity in New Delhi. Mass registrations in the past have often been a precursor to genocide. For example, the Nuremberg Laws in Germany in 1935, and then in 1982 in Myanmar. The Hinduvta ideology is said to marginalize almost 300 million human beings, Muslims, Christians, and Sikhs. This is unprecedented in history. And this does not augur well for the future of India. As we all know that marginalization of human beings leads to their radicalization. <clears throat> Mr. President, for over 72 years, India has illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir against the wishes of the Kashmiri people and in blatant violation of the resolutions of the Security Council and indeed its own commitments to the people of Kashmir. On 5th August last year, India illegally and unilaterally sought to change the status of the occupied territories and deployed additional troops, bringing the total number to 900,000 to impose a military siege on 8 million Kashmiris. All K Kashmiri political leaders were incarcerated. About 13,000 Kashmiri youth were abducted and thousands tortured. A complete curfew was imposed accompanied by a total communications blackout. Indian occupation forces have used brute force, including pellet guns, 
against peaceful protesters, imposed collective punishments, including the destruction of entire neighborhoods, and extrajudicially murdered hundreds of innocent young Kashmiris in fake encounters, refusing even to hand over their bodies for burial. The Kashmiri media and those daring to raise their voice are being systematically harassed and intimidated through the use of draconian laws. All of this is well documented in the reports of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, communications from the Special Rapporteurs of Human Rights Council, statements from human rights and civil society organizations. The international community must investigate these grave violations and prosecute the Indian civil and military personnel involved in state terrorism and serious crimes against humanity being perpetrated, I'm sad to say, with complete impunity. The objective of this brutal campaign is to impose what the RSS BJP regime has itself called the final solution for Jammu and Kashmir. To this end, the military siege is being followed by moves to change the, the demographic structure of the occupied territory. This is an attempt to obliterate the distinct Kashmiri identity in order to affect the outcome of a plebiscite envisaged in the UN Security Council resolutions. This action is in violation of the UN Charter, Council resolutions, and international law, particularly the Fourth Geneva Convention, changing demographic structure of occupied territory is a war crime. Mr. President, the brave Kashmiri people will never submit to Indian occupation and oppression. Their struggle is indigenous. They are fighting for a just cause and generation after generation have laid down their lives to rid themselves of Indian occupation. The government and people of Pakistan are committed to standing by and supporting the Kashmiri brothers and sisters in the legitimate struggle for self-determination. Mr. President, in order to divert attention from its illegal actions and atrocities in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir, India is playing a dangerous game of upping the military ante against Pakistan in a nuclearized environment. Despite constant Indian provocations and ceasefire violations along the line of control and the working boundary, targeting innocent civilians, Pakistan has exercised maximum restraint. We have consistently sensitized the world community about a false flag operation and another ill-conceived misadventure by India. My parents, Mr. President, were born in the colonial India. And I was the first generation that grew up in an independent Pakistan. I want to make it clear that any attempt by the fascist, totalitarian, RSS-led Indian government to aggress against Pakistan will be met by a nation that, that will fight for its freedom to the end. Mr. President, there will be no durable peace and stability in South Asia until the Jammu and Kashmir dispute is resolved on the basis of international legitimacy. Kashmir has been rightly described as a nuclear flashpoint. The Security Council must prevent a disaster conflict and secure the implementation of its own resolutions, as it did in the case of East Timor. The Council has considered the situation in Jammu and Kashmir three times in the past year. It must take appropriate enforcement actions. It, it must also take steps to protect the Kashmiris from an impending genocide by India. Pakistan has always called for a peaceful solution. To this end, India must ascend. To reach this end, India must ascend the measures it has instituted since 5th August 2019, and its military siege, and other gross human rights violation, 
and agree to resolve the Jammu and Kashmir dispute in accordance with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. And of course, the wishes of the people of Kashmir.